This is Dolany TV, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another edition, a very early morning edition of Edmonton Oilers discussion here on the channel. At least by my standards, as you know what, I've uh, somehow missed a lot of Yesa Puliarvi news this uh, past week. May 5th, 22 hours ago, according to Bob Stoff. There's been a lot, but that all stems, it looks like, from... A couple of things said between Mark Spector and Bob Stoffer on Oilers now back on May 5th. My apologies, like, obviously, working, being an essential worker, being a worker any time of the year, year or situation. I don't got time to uh, listen to much Oilers now, especially live, so I tend to miss some very interesting little nuggets here and there that make awesome video topics. Best part is... You guys are still willing to come and discuss them after the fact, many days removed. So with that said, again, similar to what we did last time with Yes Player Harvey, let's discuss some old news that's uh, news that's current, but not so current, or whatever you want to call it. All right, enough preamble, let's get to it. The trade rumors, the trade talk around Yes Player Harvey has kind of heated up this week, large part thanks to a discussion between Stauffer and Spectre, but also just kind of out there in the ether, the stuff going on. Because there's a couple of situations here, right? The June draft coming up, if the NHL does decide to go ahead and have a June draft, right? We've talked about an early June draft, even the June draft where it is in late June. That leaves a lot of possibilities, a lot of doors open to doing things creatively. And... Spectre Stoffer kind of talked about maybe treating it as a second trade deadline. Problem is that that doesn't so much add up if you still got playoffs and stuff coming up as per the Edmonton Journal article on the discussion. So you, you look at that that way. I think the two consensuses amongst the article on the Edmonton Journal and of course the Oilers now stuff the journal was talking about kind of mashes together this idea that the NHL would probably use players outside of the NHL that have NHL rights as well as picks to really make the draft interesting, right? Make those trades happen and such is that. Well, the Oilers are kind of in that interesting location where they could need some picks, right? A second gone for Athens to see you, third gone to Calgary depending, fourth depending, and of course the seventh gone in the Nolan VC trade, well, ladies and gentlemen, that, that makes for some ugly messes. Like, if you could just, just humor me a minute, take a second note of your very busy day if you're on your computer, and just go over to the Edmonton Oilers cap friendly page, all right? That's what I'm doing right now. And just watch, uh, okay, so yeah, trade on June, 20, June 8th, 2018. That's, uh, that's back for the seventh rounder. The fourth rounder pick traded away on February 2020, and then of course pick traded away on February 2020 as well. And hold on, where do we got it? Yeah, so 2020 conditional pick. Pick is only transferred if uh, prior to the expiration of his NHL entry level contract. So there we go. Edmonton actually gets to keep their pick. Never mind. The Oilers. Uh, the Oilers escaped that one right there just barely under the tooth and nail, but we got it. So, yes, we do have a seventh round pick, but we don't have a second and a fourth. So that leaves us without some big picks. Now, what I was talking about, yes, Athens to see you probably worth a second and a fourth straight up. That's not going to be the case because if you're talking, you can only trade prospects and you can only trade draft picks. That's where, yes, Pugliarvi comes in. And yes, Pugliarvi, we've had this discussion several times already, right? He had a weird Liga season in which he was really good, not the best, right? Obviously, you didn't know what to expect. I expected far greater things, like you're at home in Finland. Like, he, he should have been top of the league. But they also, apparently, I, I still haven't seen any official confirmation on this, so maybe I'm just not looking in the right place. But they, they count every shot you throw on net, whether it be blocked, goes into the corner, hits the net, hits the post, whatever. So he took a lot of that, which really lowered the shooting percentage, which is a concern for me. But, I mean, again, without watching a game, couldn't tell you what Yesa Pugliarvi has done outside of the highlight box. So that's where this gets interesting, right? Is Yesa Pugliarvi in a situation in which it's draft picks and guys outside of the NHL 
or prospects unsigned to contracts, well, ladies and gentlemen, that is a big market for a guy like Yespuliarvi, right? You think about the guys out there in the ether, Yespuliarvi is probably one of the biggest fish in the NHL when it comes to that kind of player. So this is good, this is good, right? Trade value goes up. If you can get that second, fourth, and something else, some other unsigned rookie, you're doing very, very well for yourself if you're Ken Holland. All things considered at this point. Now, maybe there's a team willing to trade a first-round pick for Yes Pulerby and then something else as well. Well, hey, we'll take whatever the heck we can get in terms of a good deal. And here's the thing. As much as I'm probably just downplaying Yes Pulerby's value, is in any situation, the problem is none of us have had a clue what Yes Pulerby's trade value is because if we did, then the trade would probably have to be made or the deal would come off the table. You get where I'm going? Now, the other side to this is Bob Stoffer also tweeted, and this is why we're doing kind of a combination video here and talking more broadly, is he tweeted about Leas Anderson and the possibility there. His tweet from 23 hours ago reads, Has been some tracer fire again that Edmonton would consider moving Pooley RV to the Rangers for prospect Leas Anderson. He goes on to state in the next line, this would surprise me, exclamation mark. And then at minimum, Pugliarvi should be at least a third line winger in the NHL. Anderson's foot speed is problematic for a top nine role. There you go. That's kind of the situation there. So right now, all of a sudden, you combine these two things together and you're starting to get a little bit of, well, there's smoke. There might be some fire if the NHL does decide to go with the June draft. And that's, hey, that's interesting, right? Is because then, right, if the Oilers can get some extra draft picks, everybody's talked about how stacked of a class this 2020 NHL entry draft is. Like, this is this is probably the most hyped up draft we've had since 2015, 2016, back-to-back -back years where there were incredible players available in the top five every year, right? Yes, player are we obviously taken in the top five of that year, but we're still talking about a guy who has value at the end of the day, so that's not the worst thing in the world. And you think about, right, 2016, you had Line, Matthews, Dubois, Kachuk all in there. Kachuk was number six, right? And who number five was? Ole Levy. so two out of three bomb, or two out of five bomb, but... You get where I'm going, but guys, there is some talent in those two drafts, and now you've had drafts leading up to it, and now this one where everybody pretty much, the consensus is from what I've read, from what I've figured out in this past hockey season, you can't miss in the first probably 45 to 50 draft picks of this draft. Yes, obviously, if you go off the board or do something stupid, you can, but if you take one of the top 50 guys, you're getting a guy who's going to make a difference on your team someday. And that's that's the interesting part about this draft. So then you need some picks. You've got a guy in value like Yesa Pugliarvi. And especially the other side too is depending how the Oilers want to stack the draft picks. Right? There's teams out there. I know Montreal's mentioned in the uh, Oilers Now conversation, also mentioned in the Edmonton Journal article on this whole Yesa Pugliarvi June draft trade idea. Simply put, Montreal has a heck of a lot of picks. Let's go, just go cap friendly with me one more time over to Montreal. Let's just, let's just confirm that because that's going to look very, very funny if they do have the 14 picks that they're supposed to. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. One in the first round, three in the second round, two in the third round, three in the fourth round, two in the fifth round, one in the sixth round, and two in the seventh round. Wow. All right, that is absolutely nuts. And you know what? That means a lot for uh, teams that do have players like Yes Pugliarvi. Montreal could easily scoop them up and throw them in the development system. And you think, right, Montreal, I, I think the reason they are kind of thrown around in this situation is deeper than the article or the uh, Oilers Now conversation would suggest is Montreal is a fit for Yes Pugliarvi, given, right, Jasperi Kotkaniemi, a fellow Finnish youngster, and there's there's just all around a lot of good fit there for Yes Pugliarvi, who could rocket up that team if he has a good season next year and the year after, if he ends up indeed traded there. So there's a lot of possibilities, right? The Leas Anderson, we've heard that before, but again, Bob Stoffer's shocked if it happens kind of deal. 
And then this uh, June draft really seems to be uh, intriguing depending on how the NHL decides to set up the parameters, the rules, the rights, and all that coming in and going out of whatever NHL draft happens this year. Guys, I'm Tyson, the Stolen TV. I will catch you in the next one.